guys we're back not sure what happened something was going on with the live again kind of like yesterday my apologies we are back let me give you guys just a couple minutes to come back over okay let me give you guys a couple minutes to come on back over we are live we are live we are live i'm waiting on you guys okay we are live thank you guys so much for joining it is car chronicles it is thursday thank you guys Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Good morning, Siobhan Foster. Good morning. I see you said she's here. We're going to give them just a couple minutes to come over from the other live. Um, I see you guys were saying no sound. Okay. You guys can hear. Everybody can hear. I'm not sure what happened, you guys. The same thing happened yesterday. My apologies to you guys. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, but we can hear. You guys can hear me. Okay. Thank God it was the beginning of the live. So I ain't got to go back through all the stuff that we were talking about. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes to come on in. Well, we got 87 so far. We got enough to get started. All right, so let's go ahead and start over. <laughs> My apologies again for the sound acting up. So again, great morning to you all. Hopefully you guys got your coffee and your tea and you got or you're getting where you need to be this morning. It is Thursday, honey. The top or well, the end of the, the bottom of the week, child. Praise the Lord. All right, one more day, child. Let's get through it. Tomorrow is Good Friday. Let's do what we got to do out here, honey. Okay? Yes, um... I was saying before the uh, the sound went out, um, tomorrow I may have to push my live back slightly because um, I have a few errands that I need to run to uh, get my son ready to go out of town for uh, next week, you guys. So we're still going to have Poppy in tomorrow. It's probably going to be pushed back a little late. Speaking of Poppy, and I hope you guys had a chance to check out our pop in from yesterday so that um, you guys can get that tea and the uh, new developments that we had on Diddy. I have some more new developments this morning that we're going to tie into uh what we saw on yesterday as well okay good morning to everybody coming in thank y'all for joining this morning on my way in i was initially going to work from home today but i said no i'm gonna go into the office because i definitely need to be home tomorrow um with everything i got to do yes but uh nevertheless we are here honey everything said in the video is alleged and in my opinion and is used for fair use and entertainment purposes only all right yes Celebrity news is always first, and that's where we will begin, okay? All right, let's get started. Uh, will Smith, honey, Will Smith was asked about um, his net worth, you guys. Y'all know Will Smith been on TV since Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He got that old money. That was, what, in the 90s? Yes, girl. Way back in the 90s, girl. So he got that old money, Will Smith, do. And uh, 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 says that the actor, honey, was asked by complex speedy mormon if it was true that his net worth honey was 350 million as listed by google okay says but uh says but will smith laughed and he laughed it off by saying that he didn't really keep up with or keep track of that stuff now we all know when we hear net worth it doesn't mean he has actually 300 mil 350 million in the bank that's mean that means his money his assets and all the stuff that he owns what is he worth Okay, that's what that means, his net worth, all right, including the money that he's made. So, he may be up there, guys, because Will Smith, he's been in the game for a hot damn minute. Will Smith's been in the game for a minute, so he could very well be there. But he says he doesn't keep up with that type of stuff. Okay, whatever they listed it as, listed it as is probably what it is. That's what he's saying. Um, <laughs> it could be worth that, though. I think he is. I mean, hell, he's done some great, Will Smith been in some good movies. Will Smith been in some good movies, okay? You can't deny that. Now, he is out here slapping folk and acting out of order. But when it comes to that acting, you can't, you can't deny that with Will Smith. He that dude. All right. Will Smith says that uh, growing up in Hollywood, that he was so focused on making money. He says, but now that he's in his 50s, that he's more focused on give, give, give. So he's more focused on giving to people and helping people versus uh, focusing more so on chasing a dime. And when you say that, that means your money right. So, yeah, you might be up there in the 350 million net worth. If you more focused and more so on giving, 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 then that means your money ain't funny like that. Because most people who money funny, 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 you ain't out here giving, giving, giving like that, okay? But, um, so he says that, yes, he's in the second half of his life and his focus is on giving. As long as he ain't out here giving no backhands, I'm here for it, okay? Because we know he loves to give them out, child. He give out a few, a few uh, free backhands. <laughs> As Chris Rock, child, his face is still... Uh, frying out here from that slap but um but he says that our uh, worldly things no longer fulfill him 
Will also goes on to say that no relationship, no money, and not even his own kids can make him truly happy anymore. And I, that's, I said, that's sad. That's sad to make a statement like that. He said, no relationship, no money, no, not even his own kids, y'all. Not even your own kids can make him truly happy anymore. What is going on with Will? What is going on with Will? Y'all know his son, uh, Jaden, y'all know he got emancipated when he was very young. So it was a lot, of, they said it was a lot of stuff going on in the Smith household. I mean, both their kids about crazy as hell. They let their kids kind of grow up kind of free will, like they have their, you know, a free will to do whatever they want and think and, and be whatever they want to be. Um, you kind of have to be careful with that when you're raising kids because you don't want them to have too much free will to where they don't respect boundaries. Um, and they're kind of, uh, you know, checked out from reality a little bit to where they're just out here doing any and everything. You have to be very careful with that when you parent. And I don't like to tell people how to raise their kids, but you, you want to give them some boundaries. You want to give them, um, that, that fear of God. They got to have that as well. But, uh, sometimes these kids are too far gone. Like, honestly, they've been raised in Hollywood. That's one of the worst things that you can ever do is raising damn kids in Hollywood because, we already know how these Hollywood kids be turning out, child. They be drugged out. They be about crazy as hell. They, they really have a tough life, okay? But he says that his happiness is uh, more so just internal. So y'all know he and Jada, their marriage is not doing so well. Uh, they won't get divorced. J I know Jada was saying that she and Will have always vowed to stay together forever no matter what and that they're not going to divorce. Yeah, there's a lot of money to be exchanged if they do it. And the bulk of that money is coming from Will. Now, Jada's net worth is $50 million. I looked it up. Jada's net worth is $50 million. His net worth is said to be, uh, by Google standards, $350 million. So if they do divorce, Jada, she going to get a bag from him. Because they've been married well over the 10-year mark. And y'all know how. And I think they do stay in California. So California law says that if you stay married to that person for 10 years or more, then you are entitled to have. And, uh, and that is if they have a prenup, which they probably don't. They probably don't have no damn prenup, but if they do, that's good for them. But according to California laws, it does state, state that if you marry to that person for over 10 years, if you make that 10 year mark, you are entitled to half of their assets and or money. So that'll be a nasty divorce. So no wonder they're gonna just stay together and be miserable. I couldn't do that. I could not do that, I'm sorry. I, I wanna move on with my life if I meet somebody else later on down the line that maybe, you know, I want to restart my life and get remarried again. I don't want that lingering mess going on from the last situation where I have to deal with that or that person still feeling away or just still kind of holding on to me or feeling entitled because we decided that we just never going to ever divorce. I, I don't never want to have to deal with that shit. When I'm done, I'm done. I'm that type. I don't spend the block. I, I'm not the spend the block type of chick. When I'm done with you, I'm done. Like, stick a fork in it, baby. You ain't even got to look over your shoulder, honey. It's over. And that's how I That's how I feel. It's weird. But I hope he gets some, some clarity on that. Because when you say your kids no longer fulfill you and all that, child, what the hell? All right, but, uh, so, yes, uh, but the total, like I said, we, his total net worth is $350 million according to Google. I looked that up, too. So, that is true. But uh, let's go on, child, to the next topic. Shout out and prayers to Will Smith, child. He is troubled. We all done been through some stuff in Hollywood. We know how Hollywood is. We've heard a lot of stuff about him being with men and other things. Uh, Y'all know he did a movie role where he actually had to like be kissing a man and all that. So that those are things that's required in Hollywood in order for you to make it big. You have to kind of lower your standards in order to make it. And it's sad that you have to, to, to give up things that you, you know, your beliefs and, and things like that in order to be a huge star. You do and most and i've been reading up on a lot of this stuff they said you know a lot of them are involved in that illuminati type stuff they're saying if you want to be this huge big star like way up there with beyonce and them you got to sell your soul in a way i feel like will has done that i feel like he's done that i feel like in some areas in his life i feel like he sold his soul in order to be this big star I'm trying to tell you, what's his name? Uh, the guy that played Lamont on Sanford and Son, he talked about it on a live that I saw. He's a, I think he's doing like ministering now. He's in ministry now. He talked about how he just got out of Hollywood because there was a lot of things very satanic that he saw that he was not willing to jeopardize his faith and who he believed in and what he believed in in order to conform to what Hollywood wanted him to be. Their, you know, the Hollywood standards. So he was saying, hey, I had to step back and get out of Hollywood because you, you typically have to sell your soul in order to make it. And that's sad. 
That's sad. Nobody wants to do that. That's a scary place to be in. When they have these satanic rituals and stuff. I've talked about it on my lives before. They have these satanic rituals and you go in and you sign these contracts like with Diddy. Where you got to go in and, and, and you know, do sexual things. Violate, you know, be violated in order to make it in Hollywood. That's so sad and crazy. But, uh, oh, child, oh, child. They said I can't see much on this live. Can you guys not see? Somebody said they can't see. I hope you guys can see. I hope you guys can see. Um, do I need to wipe my phone off, y'all? I can clean my phone off. Let me, let me see, y'all. That she did a lot. Hold on. Okay. All right. So, clean the screen off, y'all. Clean the camera off. But, uh, yes, y'all, that's that with Will Smith. Present him. Let's move on, honey, because we got more topics, and I want to get through everything. Um, so, Jesse Smollett, I renamed him Jesse Lyatt ever since he, his ass went out here doing that old, uh, that whole lying mess that he did. This motherfucker is still out here lying. I can't take him no more. Jesse Lyatt appeals his case, you guys. He, he appeals his case. Uh, his conviction is set to be heard by the uh, Illinois Supreme Court now. So, he is taking this whole lie to the Supreme Court. I said, Boy, if you don't serve this damn time in jail and get over this bullshit, why are you still doing this? Somebody said they can't see, guys. Please refresh on your end. I don't want to have to, uh, I don't want to have to, uh, restart everything here because we're kind of like getting into the middle of our live, okay? Refresh on your end if you guys cannot see on your end, okay? I'm not sure what is going on. Uh, get out of here, Satan. Get out of our live, honey. We're going to talk about this stuff this morning, okay? Somebody said you're good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Mods, thank y'all so much, okay, too, for helping out on, on that end, all right? So let's get into it. Uh, they're saying that Justice Smollett, guys, is uh, headed to the U.S. Supreme Court with his case, you guys. Y'all know he's already been found guilty um, in Illinois court for lying. And... Um, Y'all know when he put that whole scheme together with that whole MAGA bullshit that he was doing. Now, this says that his appeal case was approved, so it will be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, Justice's been appealing his case since 2021 when he was found guilty of lying, okay, uh, to cops about a hate crime, you guys, that he orchestrated. Y'all remember when that whole thing went down where they had the two big African guys that uh, Justice was saying that these guys attacked him and all this other stuff and was yelling out, mega, mega this, mega that. He said he was going out in the middle of the night, child, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning to go get some Subway. And these guys jumped him and had this whole noose and all that. Y'all remember when that whole mess, he made it all up. They found him guilty in court, okay? So, Jesse was ordered to serve 150 days in jail, uh, at which he only served six of those days before he went and filed an appeal. And he also checked into a rehab to say that he had some type of uh, drug issue or something like that. I said, see, anything to avoid accountability. He comes off as being a little narc. He, he comes off as being a narc. I'm sorry. He, 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 will not, he will not go ahead and bow down and say, you know what? I lied. Let me go ahead and take the responsibility. He was all in court trying to act like he was acting in a movie. I will not be treated like this. You guys will not be treating me like this. And if something happens to me in prison, I did not unalive myself. That was him in court, y'all. And the judge had to keep banging the gavel and telling him to be quiet. And he was speaking over the judge. If something happens to me in prison, I did not unalive myself. That was him. I said, this motherfucker is crazy. You would have thought they gave him 20 years in prison. I said, nigga, it's 150 days. Go in there and knock that shit out and come on out of here and be a better person. You know why he was doing that? Because he, he knew his little cute ass was going to get up in there and they were going to turn him out. That's what he knew. He got an ass curl like Elder Barge in him. He light-skinned. Okay, he cute in the face and thin in the waist. They were going to turn his ass out. He was going to come out of there with his shirt tied up in the front. He already knew what it was. 150 days, that's all they gave you for a crime that your ass should have got years for. And he only served six of them days. So now he's trying to take it and go waste the Supreme Court's time on this bullshit. I'm so sick of him. Like, take accountability, sir. Take accountability for the lie that you told and had all them doing this, this investigating and mess. They wasted time and money. Illinois, they wasted time and money on this case when they have so many other cases in Chicago. Chicago is a very rough place to stay with crimes and people that's being unalived on a daily 
and you waste you waste their time on a case that didn't even have to be because you were lying and looking for attention. Like what the hell? What the hell? So they said that he had a three judge panel that was upholding the appeal, finding that the jury were justified in their decision. Okay, so Jesse is still, like I said, keeping up this damn lie, and he is taking it to the Supreme Court. I will keep you guys updated. Not that I care, but for just news purposes only. Okay, I'm moving on because he ain't about to get on my damn nerves. I cannot take him. He's ruined his career over a lie. Jesse Smollett, baby, you ruined your career over this lie. And it ain't going to get no better with you taking it to the Supreme Court. You're going to be found guilty again. And you're still going to have to serve that time and probably more. Let sleeping dogs lie. Serve your time, boy. Damn. I ain't never seen somebody to be so damn wrong and still fighting to be right. It's so crazy. Oh, my God. All right, moving on, child. NBA's child. The NBA's favorite karate kid is back in the news again. Draymond Green. I named him the NBA's favorite karate kid because his ass stay out here chopping somebody. He stay chopping and whoa, he stay doing that shit out there on the court. I be like, bro, as great of a basketball player as you are, you stay fighting out here. You do. So we got some news up on him, child. So NBA's, uh, the NBA's favorite karate kid, Draymond Green, honey, is back at it again after he was ejected four minutes into yesterday's game. All right, so much so it pissed Steph Curry off. Steph Curry broke out in tears, y'all. He was visibly pissed. And was shaking his head, okay, and got emotional on the court, pulling his jersey up over his face and crying because Draymond Green done fucked up the thing again. Now, he just came back from a suspension, as you guys know. I reported it for uh, upper cupping uh, and, and, and fighting and elbowing folk out on the damn thing. He's too aggressive on the court. So they gave him a suspension. They allowed him to go through these classes to where he can, uh, you know, get his aggression under control. And he came back doing the very same thing. They were booing him. They were, uh, people were clapping when the ref told him that he was being ejected. He also called the ref a bitch ass nigga. Okay, they zoomed in on him. He was arguing with the ref back and forth. He was very aggressive. He was on this shit here. And he called the ref a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> And they ejected him from the game four minutes into the game. From uh, It was the Golden State Warriors and the uh, Magic's game, okay? Yes, he's out of control. He's out of control. Like, And the players for the Golden State Warriors, they are tired of his ass. They like, look, bro, you messing it up for everybody. You are giving the team a reputation because you don't know how to contain yourself. It's not that serious. Four minutes in the game, he already had two technical fouls. Draymond Green, okay? What is his problem? <laughs> four minutes, y'all. <laughs> you already acting a fool in four minutes of the damn game. All right. But he was seen, like I said, visibly being aggressive on the court again and arguing with the ref to where another ref had to come up and try to calm him down. He would not calm down. He was being very aggressive in his words and his hand movements. They finally just told him, just go. Get off the court. You're ejected from the game. Okay, and everybody in the stands were clapping like they was like, yes, get his ass out of here. So everybody's tired of Draymond. Like when you get a second chance like that and people allow you to come back and be great, you still and you still own the same mess, Draymond. I don't know. It's like you standing in your own way. You're, on, you're your own worst enemy at this point. He's a great player. He's just too fucking aggressive. Maybe you might need to get your CDL, sir, and get out here and, and get on the road or something. You might need to get your CDLs at this point, Draymond, and just going to be a truck driver because maybe basketball is just not for you. You're too aggressive. You need to be by yourself in a truck hauling shit up and down the road. Just you. You can't fight with nobody else in the truck. Get your CDLs, sir. <laughs> get your CDLs and get on the road. Get you a dog and get your CDLs and take your ass on the road and just go drive. That way you ain't got to be worrying about fighting with folks and calling people bitch-ass niggas on the court. Like, that's team too much. That's team too much. Oh my God. So yeah, I was like, when you don't got Steph Steph Curry out here crying, this shit gets serious. This boy was busy. He done turned red and everything crying. I said, Lord, not Steph. Not Steph Curry. Oh my God, Draymond. Go on and look into them CDL, sir. Cause that's all I can that's all I can tell you this morning, sir. That's it. That's it. And you calling for a bitch ass nigga like that's team too. But let's move on, child. Let's move on, child. All right, Bishop T.D. Take That Jake's child. Bishop T.D. Take That Jake's. Y'all know the T and the D stand for Take That in his name. Uh, that's what I had named it, him. All right, he is mentioned in Diddy's court documents. Yes, he is. Since he tried to say that he was not. Sir, I want to I go and let you know that you are, okay? 
Bishop T.D. Jakes, Mr. Toot It Up. T.D. means toot it. <laughs> you gonna let him beep, 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 beep. Pastor T.D., Pastor, take that. Okay. You are getting swallowed up on camera over there at Diddy's house. Oh, God, you were. <laughs> yes, T. <laughs> Thanks, T. Talk with your girl for being here. <laughs> okay. Pastor Take That Jakes was getting swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? <laughs> Ain't that what he said in his video? <laughs> Y'all know I'm about to troll his ass this morning. <laughs> Because I've been moved, I've been moved my membership from your church a long time ago. I've been took my dollar back. <laughs> Woo child, they say he was a strong bottom lord. <laughs> I said, not a strong bottom, Jesus. Say it ain't so, Lord, not a strong bottom lord. Child. Y'all ever on the pastor to be a strong bottom I am? Yeah, that's Pastor Take That Jake's right there. That's Take That Jake, girl. Girl, they say he can take it too. That's what they say, girl. And this got the surveillance cameras to tell it, Lord. All right, so now, as you guys know by now, Diddy's house was raided. Unless your spaceship just landed yesterday, girl. Let me go up. Uh, 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 yes, girl. <laughs> A power bottom child. Who child? Now, this ain't it. Uh, 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 Y'all know the guy, Young Rod child. Little Young L Rod child. Little Rod, or whatever his name is. The producer child filed this damn lawsuit against Diddy. Uh, 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 documenting, honey, a lot of sexual assaults and drugs, child, and all of that. Or grugs, as one to call it, child. Grugs, that's G-R-U-G-S, child. The grugs, child. Y'all ever been on grugs? I heard of drugs, but not the grugs. But anyway, child. Uh, uh, and one of his protégés also spoke, spoke up as well. Now, everybody's talking, all right? Everybody's talking, and they're talking about Diddy, and now T.D. Jake's name been brought up in this bullshit as well. Now, it's said and alleged, honey, according to the feds out here, Y'all know they, they've confiscated uh, several electronic devices, cameras, and several pieces of footage from Diddy's several homes that they raided, okay, as of Tuesday, I think it was. Um, yeah. So in those things, it's coming out to uh, say that Diddy had cameras in every room of every, um, in every room in his homes, okay, in all of his homes. That means his daughter's rooms. Uh, the bathrooms, everywhere he had cameras. So when he had these SEX -roll, SEX roll parties, he said, and alleged FOs, all of these things were captured on camera. So that means dignitaries, uh, basketball players, football players, uh, record execs, all of these people that attended these things are on Diddy's cameras. So Diddy, baby, he is, he, Diddy say, I ain't going down by myself, damn it. If I'm doing these FOs, bitch, everybody that come through the door, they going down with me. So that's, some, that's something that R. Kelly didn't think of. That's something R. Kelly didn't think of. So now people can't say they weren't there and they didn't participate in certain things because Elrod was saying that on those videotapes, okay, on those surveillance things are uh, ev is evidence of young, teenage, underage girls and boys in these alleged sexual assaults and or FOs and very important people are also on that footage, okay? T.D. Jakes is also named in this lawsuit being on the footage as well. What the freak were you doing there, sir? See, now he tried to say before that he was not, and he also was talking about he was going to be suing people and coming after people for that, and now you are named in this lawsuit, T.D. Jakes, for being on surveillance cameras up there tooting and booty, baby. Baby, the booty brownies was brownie in, is what they were trying to say in the video. I don't make the news. I just report it. You were tooted up. You were tooted up in the video. Videos don't lie. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now they're saying that Diddy says that he planned to uh, leverage his relationships with T.D. Jakes to soften his relationship being around Cassie. So during the time that he was around Cassie, he was hanging out with people like T.D. Jakes to kind of throw people off to make people think he's trying to, you know, be about all the God thing. When really he was just out here being Diddy. So he was using T.D. Jakes uh, and his reputation in order to soften his reputation of what people believed him to be, all right? So did he use T.D. Jakes uh, to keep eyes off of him? So when they saw him around T.D. Jakes, when people saw him around T.D. Jakes, they were like, oh, Diddy's hanging around T.D. Jakes? He must be on the up and up now. When really he was still out here on the trafficking and the drugs, allegedly now, okay? Still out here on the drugs, trafficking, 
uh, 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 Ike Turner and women and all the shit that he been doing. <laughs> Baby, so they said that T.D. Jakes now is being used to make Diddy's image soften by being seen with him publicly, child, and to keep eyes up off him. But T.D. Jakes, baby, your name is mentioned in this lawsuit, and that's going to be a, a very huge slap in your face when all this shit come out because the investigation is still underway. The Fed's about to take him down. And everybody that was involved with, if you, if you were with somebody that was underage, if you was trafficking, helping traffic and all that stuff, if your ass is going down. So your ass is going to be getting swallowed up in the penitentiary. Turn to your neighbor and say, have you ever been swallowed up? Have you ever been swallowed up? Ah. Ain't that how they say in Church of God in Christ? Y'all know when they get a little tune in church. Y'all know the preacher going, he, he getting ready to crank that thing on up so y'all can get on up out of there, child. Y'all know the preacher, he ain't ready yet. Y'all ain't about to leave church yet, child. Till he get that tune, the preacher get that tune. That's when he getting on close to the end of that sermon, child. He's going to be sitting there for about an hour while he done read every scripture in the damn Bible. Y'all know that. Y'all do, y'all, yeah, for those of y'all to go to church. You already know, child, when they get that tune, when they start preaching, and uh, when they get to doing that right there, turn, uh, turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor, and tell your neighbor that the Lord, uh, when they get to doing that, you about to go home and start eating them greens, macaroni and cheese, fried chicken, all that. Because you know, most people, y'all going to cook that shit before some of you get home. Y'all know. Have you ever been swallowed up? Ha! Have you ever had a nine inch? Have you ever had a 12 foot long? I ain't talking about subway, but I'm talking about a slong. Yeah. When they get to doing that. <laughs> Watch out. I wish I had a tambourine in my truck, Lord. <laughs> Where's my tambourine, Jesus? <laughs> Lord, the church of God in Christ days. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still be watching on, uh, I watch my church back home online. But it ain't the same. It ain't the same. It ain't the same. Y'all know, child. Both be running across the floor, jumping around in a child. They be shouting, child, with the shout music. It ain't the same. But when you've been swallowed up, ha! Mm. <laughs> Don't play with me this morning. <laughs> mm. Ain't that what the pastor be doing? Y'all know when they get crunk like that. Yeah, I'm about to run across my own floor in the truck. I'm about to run across the floor in the truck. Y'all ever ran across your own floor in the truck? Let me move on. Ain't what the, ain't what the pastor say. Let me move on now. Nah. Yeah. Pastor Caramel is in the house. All right, let's move on, y'all. I ain't playing with y'all this morning. <laughs> Glory. All right, so go ahead and bash Huntsville fans, child. Let's, let's, let's get off that, child. <laughs> I had to give y'all a little chetch this morning. A little Thursday chetch. Mm. I'm feeling real good right here, Lord. Yes. Ain't that with the old mother over in the corner? That, when you see that hand right there. Y'all know pastor's really preaching. When y'all see the hand go like that right there, like she getting electrocuted over that child. Yes, God, honey, when they get that electrocution in that hand, you know the pastor's really, pastor's really laying it down thick. But all right, ain't nobody mad but the devil, child. Let's move on. Ah, right, but love marriage Huntsville fans, girl. Okay, they are weighing in on a recent live child that won the Uncle Wonder Bread child and went out here and said, child, that Melody is light skinned, honey, and pretty, and still couldn't keep a man. Plus, her G-Wagon done got, done got snatched up. I said, child, lies don't be caring who tell it. And child, obviously, they love to lie. But, all uh, right, we already know Mel done went live and showed that she still has her G-Wagon because she was up in there with little, little Sugar Mama, child. While she was in there talking to Sugar Mama, we saw that Mercedes uh, emblem. So, we already knew what it was, child. She was g wagoned up still. So, uh, the lies can stop. She does still have her car. People like to throw out negative narratives about people to try to make shit look different than what it really is but we already know Mel is making that coin she can afford her car so you know unlike other people she can get repossessed and all that uh we won't call no names because yeah but anyway child uh well we all know like I said Wanda is very color struck okay I don't know what it is it's like she's you ever met a uh, like old uh, old 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 uh grandma type woman who is just who don't like nobody 
who's just uh who don't like nobody don't like their own kind wanda is that wanda gives that like what do you have against your own kind it doesn't matter if a person is dark skin or not it doesn't matter if this person is light skin or not well, what does the color of your skin have to do with it, the fact if you keep a man or not if he's a trash ass nigga like martell you don't need to keep that that's trash what do you throw what do you do with trash besides throw it out okay and it ain't the fact that she couldn't keep him because uh as we all know melody divorced martell so if she wanted to keep him we already said if she called that nigga right now it's skid marks in the driveway the nigga gonna pull up if Mel called martell right now and be like look <laughs> like look uh i've been thinking about this and i think you know we got these four kids i think we should work this shit out and just be you know be back together the nigga gonna be over there he gonna be like Ariane who bitch he gonna be over there we already know that's why he acting up that's why he acting out that's why he's steady taking her back and forth to court that's why he giving her hell because he want her back so it ain't got shit to do with the fact that you know she couldn't keep him oh she could keep him if she wanted him but you just get tired of trash ass niggas after a while you be like okay it's got to be something better than this like what's next it can't be this like nigga i was with you when your hairline was fucked up you couldn't read you still can't read like i was with you so really she lowered her standards to be with him so it ain't that it, it really won't that wanda <laughs> i'm sorry that all your men was trash ass niggas because obviously you think that the way you look is what keep a man it ain't it ain't women need to understand that it ain't got shit to do with your, your skin color it's, the, it's it's who you are it's what you are inside your heart it's who you are your beliefs and how you live your life I mean, damn. People are so I don't I don't get that. That's probably why Tisha act the way she do. When wanting she's so obsessed with being light skinned. It ain't about that, girl. Be yourself. Love yourself. Black women, we come in all different shades. Embrace your melanin, honey. Embrace who you are. Don't allow somebody to make you feel inferior to who you are and, and what your skin color is. Everybody can't be caramel. Shit. You just can't. Don't be out here with a pack of the paper bag challenge it should not be about that tisha is so it's sad that you she was raised to to be you know to where she's being compared to other women and you don't feel like you're good enough because you're not a certain color it's not about that embrace who you are it's a lot of beautiful black women with darker skin embrace that tisha ain't a bad looking girl with makeup was that shady y'all was that shady when i said it like that oh well too late shit's already out I'm just saying, she ain't a bad looking girl when she put on makeup. Now, without makeup, ooh, it's Thriller. It's just a Thriller, Thriller night. Oh, it's she Thriller without makeup. I don't like to talk about people. I look at Mel, she fresh faced. I said, girl, 7th Avenue been out too fucking long. For you not to smear not none, just on the cheekbone, girl. Just put some on the cheekbone. Just work with the cheekbone and see what that shit do. See what that be like. Just just right here. You ain't got to put it all over the face. Just put a little right here. Girl, you out here on your thriller bullshit. It's past the midnight. That's Tisha on her lives. On this shit right here. No makeup on. <laughs> Tisha like, I'm like, what, girl? What are you doing? Girl, what are you doing? I was at check my damn calendar. I said, fuck, is it Halloween already? I said, how the fuck we get in Halloween in this March? What the fuck? Girl, it's still March. How the fuck we get to Halloween? That's in October. All the way down to the 31st. How the fuck we get to Halloween already in March? She be on live like she be killing the girls, God. This be Tisha. This is Marceau's wife. Like, bitch, we don't make the women the fuck. This her on live. Let me take my glass off. This Tisha on live. Like she's killing the girls out here. <laughs> I said, girl, cut that shit off. <laughs> Go back there and put some damn Maybelline on your face and sit your ass down in here. And use your skin tone this time, okay? Because I'm tired now. I here looking like one of the DeBarges. Tisha is a DeBarge with makeup on. <laughs> and flavor, flavor flavor with it off. Did I say that? I'm sorry, y'all. Her mama gonna come for me and I'm ready. But anyway. So anyway, child, back to it. Y'all know I gotta be a little messy. <laughs> y'all know I'm messy. Y'all know I'm messy. <laughs> I say what I'm fuck i want over here on my channel that's why y'all love me because i'm so damn raw i'm gonna say whatever i want to say i don't give a damn who's mad i don't get child 
<laughs> Sheree, let me use your phrase right quick. And I, you can have it back because you ain't got shit else going on. Who gonna check me, boo? You can have it back. You can have it back. <laughs> Who gonna check me, boo? Keep sweat, tell them. Nobody. <laughs> Who gonna tell me what I can say and what I can't? Keep sweating. You tell him again. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody, buddy. <laughs> That's what it said on Friday. Nobody, buddy. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. So let's get back to it. All right. So, um, yeah, but uh, 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 but y'all know Marcel's choice in women. They're light-skinned women. So I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. So maybe that's that's what she's trying to conform to. I don't know. But I didn't like the way Wanda kind of used that whole color thing to try to make it seem like that uh, uh, Melody is so pretty. She did give a compliment. If it was backhanded. Uh, she, she's real pretty. She is real pretty and light-skinned, you know. But she still couldn't keep no man. But you didn't you say you had a boyfriend and a husband? You got a husband and a boyfriend. You got a boyfriend and a husband on the side. So why you gotta be, why you gotta have all these men in order to be fulfilled? I'm trying to figure that out. And the husband look like he homeless. I don't say that shit. And I, and I can talk about you because it was brought to my attention that you said something about my husband. So I gotta be, now nah, I gotta hit low. I'm sorry. Y'all know I'm messy as hell. Y'all know I save, y'all know I save my shit for, for, for I, I put my, I put my stuff in the vault and then, and then I talk about it. Okay. It was brought to my attention that she mentioned my husband again on live. So now I got to talk about yours. The one that, that you picked up from Skid Row. Okay. In order to get his uh, benefits or whatever. Okay. Yeah. He, he look homeless. Uh, uh, thank you. To, thank you. To, uh, chit chat with QT if she's in here this morning. Okay. So yes. Uh, shout out to Wanda's homeless child. Shout out to him. The homeless looking man. All right. The one to sleep down the hallway down there over in the funeral parlor. Down there in the third casket. All right. But uh, uh, yes, child. Wanda, get your life, child. Get your life. I don't even give you no more clout this morning, child. But Mel does still have, have her G-Wagon, okay? Melly still has her G-Wagon, for those of you that did not know, all right? Because she is out here serving the girls, all right? And ain't got shit to do with Martell or nobody else. Melly is making it on her own. We already talked about how she started all the way over from nothing, honey. She, start, she started from the bottom, and she damn sure is here, all right? And if you didn't know by now, then damn it, you know. So let's stop the false narratives, okay? Shout out to Mel. Shout out to Mel. And shout out to Mel. All right. Boom right along, child. The woman who um, was involved in the 1999 club pow powing with um, with Diddy and y'all remember rapper Shine was there and J Lo was was there as well. That's when J Lo was dating Diddy. Now this woman, she's come out, you guys, uh, and says that. Um, well, of course, let's back up. Y'all know that Shine actually served time for that initial pow powing to uh, keep Diddy from going to jail. Okay. So now this woman, she's come out. To say, of course, she's been talking about it before, that Diddy was the one that pow powed her, you guys. She says that Diddy is the person who pow powed her, and she is asking for this case to be reopened. What y'all guys think about that? Now, she did get a settlement from this said uh, lawsuit where she, where she sued him before. Now, of course, with all this going on with the phase raiding Diddy's house, and all this stuff going on with Homeland Security and the feds getting involved. This woman has now come out to say, hey, it was not Shine that pow powed me. It was indeed Diddy. She says, I actually saw him with the pow pow when he pulled it in my face and he pow powed me. So she is asking that this case be reopened because, as you guys know, Shine, rapper Shine, uh, served 10 or more years in prison for Diddy. And, of course, you know some money was involved for him to do that because Diddy, y'all know, was not about to go to jail. You know that. You know Shine had a lot of money thrown his way to where he got out, he's straight. Y'all know he went over, I think he live in Belize. Y'all know he um, is now a part of the uh, Nation of Islam and all this other stuff now. He's doing very well. Okay, he got out and hit the ground running because that money was sitting there waiting uh, whenever Diddy paid his ass for spending all that time in prison for him. We all, and I already felt like Diddy had some shit to do with it. I already felt like it. But uh, so that that's what it is. This lady, she wants that case reopened, okay? And she has said that she will testify. I really hope she stays safe because, baby, speaking out against Diddy, we have heard people not being here anymore when you start speaking up. And, and yeah, it, it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. I hope she is is being protected. I hope she is being protected because, baby, messing with Diddy, y'all already know. But then again, with the feds and stuff watching him so close like that, I hope he don't do nothing crazy. This lady needs to be very careful because she is, she's giving, she got dates, she got time, she's giving names. Like, this lady really want to see Diddy go down. 
So I, I really pray that she stays safe while she's trying to get this case reopened because that's going to be, ooh, child. Diddy, I don't know, baby. Everybody's trying to get Diddy taken down. But Diddy's lawsuit, like I said, uh, we already talked about the hidden cameras and politicians and everybody else being involved in that, uh, in all of those houses, okay? But Diddy, like I said, he's kind of building his own case against other people in case he goes down, which we know he's going to go down, okay? We already know he's going to go down. But this lady wants that case reopened to say that Diddy was the one that pow powed her, okay? Yeah, that shit is so sad. Uh, 50 Cent is also weighing in uh, after finding out that his baby mama was one of the uh, SEX workers for Diddy. All right, 50 Cent has just found out that his baby mama for his youngest son, okay, uh, her name is Daphne Joy, Daphne Joy, rather. Uh, she's the mother of 50 Cent's youngest son, was one of Diddy's SEX workers with Young Miami. So Diddy is out here saying, he says that I didn't know that you were an SEX worker. He said that you look as you look at you. He said that this shit is a movie now. Okay, so <laughs> y'all know he is petty. I already told you guys yesterday that uh, 50 Cent is trying to get together a uh, surviving Diddy documentary. He's been talking about it. He first mentioned it back in December, as I told you guys before. So he is he he's trying to also help expose Diddy. Yeah, he's trying to also help expose Diddy. We know that that surviving R. Kelly uh, documentary is what helped get R. Kelly's ass locked up. So guys, ooh, child Diddy, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I don't know what to tell you, bro, because uh, everybody's after your ass. Uh, but they're saying that um, uh, that according to court documents, guys, that both Daphne Joy and Young Miami were paid by Diddy to be his SEX workers via cash, apps, and uh, through electronic wire payments, you guys, participating in several FOs for Diddy. It is all on surveillance cameras as well. So they are on camera doing some very egregious things as well. Now, Young Miami is also listed as a person who trafficked the pink Kokiana, as we talked about before, to Diddy as well, okay? That's also documented as well. And Lil Rod also uh, brought that to their attention, including the little, uh, y'all know the white guy that just recently got announced that, that, called, that they called Diddy's mule, okay? Brendan, y'all know the guy Brendan? He is also mentioned in the lawsuit as well. So Lil Rod is cracking this case, baby. He's giving names and he's telling stuff. I pray that he stays safe uh, until this case is also cracked as well. Because, baby, it's when you start giving names and you start talking about people like that, people like Diddy and other people, child, stuff, we, we see people go missing. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, oh, child. So, oh, my God. So Young Miami, like I said, she's being real quiet, guys. Young know, Miami's been real, real quiet, uh, but I think she knows that her ass is probably going to be going down, too, in this damn case. So I feel like she thinks that maybe if I just be quiet, this shit will blow over. <gasps> negative. Negative. Because your name is being brought up in a lot of stuff. Drug trafficking and also recruiting uh, other girls for trafficking purposes as well. So Young Miami, your ass is about to go down, too. You ain't doing shit else. Your music ain't doing nothing. Your podcast. Your podcast is over. I mean, JT is at least out on tour. Young Miami ain't doing shit but sitting back looking at all the comments and responding. So you can go on to jail, too. You won't do nothing else. Diddy done stop your bag. So you might as well go on to jail, too, sis. I'm just saying. What else are you doing? What else are you doing with your life? I'll answer for you not a damn thing. How you let Diddy, how you let Diddy F up your life like that? You a whole city girls with a whole contract. You could have took your ass on tour. And 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 I know your albums were triple uh triple cardboard out here, girl. But you still could have went out here and, and did what you had to do. You had a whole you had a whole leg up. More than some of these other women out here. You had a whole career. Okay. But as mentioned yesterday, like I said, uh the 50 Cent, he is announcing he is gonna he, he is gonna get that uh surviving Diddy documentary off the ground. Uh, and a lot of people's names are going to be brought up in this, guys. A lot of people are going to be exposed from this, okay? So now it explains uh, 50 Cent's obsession now <laughs> with trying to expose Diddy. Now, especially now that he's found out that his uh, his baby mama was involved with Diddy in this whole uh, trafficking situation. That's just going to give him more um, ammunition to come for Diddy. That's exactly what it's going to do, okay? It says that Jag named uh, a lot of them in her video. Yes, Jaguar Wright been screaming from the mountaintops. And the crazy thing is, people been saying, oh, she's crazy. Don't believe nothing she say. You better. <laughs> and everything that she said so far that I've seen been very accurate. Jaguar Wright, shout out to her. 
Jaguar right, everything that she's been saying thus far, crazy or not, has been accurate about Diddy. Like, for real, for real. Uh, but let, let me go ahead and get into this because this is something else that I found out. Homeland Security officer uh, actually reported that Diddy's raid was based off of concrete allegations collected from victims, you guys. They also claim that uh, when charges come down, they says that we will get him where, wherever he is. So they were like, we don't give a damn. Wherever he go, we watching him. Y'all know they already confiscated his passport. So ain't nowhere he can go. He can't be like Russell Simmons and hop his ass over there to, a, to another country. Okay, where he can't be extradited. They watching him very closely. Believe that. They know where he is. They know what he ate for breakfast. They can tell you when he took a shit. They know everything that's going on with Diddy. They are watching him. So the feds, feds like I said, they be on it. They be on it, child. They be on it. They be watching. Just like they snatched R. Kelly's ass up at the Trump Towers. When, uh, when they arrested him, he went out to go walk his dog. They snatched his ass right on up. And he ain't been out since. He been locked up ever since. The feds is on his ass. So he better not break wind wrong or his ass is going down. Uh, but with everybody cooperating with all the depositions, uh, with all the FOs and the drug handlers and the SEX workers and did his violent behavior, you guys, names of particip participants and violators is coming out. And that's the difference between Diddy's case and R. Kelly's case. Diddy's case, the people are, are cooperating. With R. Kelly's case, he was able to pay people to be quiet, okay? But in the first case, of course. But the second case, people were talking. These girls were talking. And once people get to talking, that's when the shit gonna hit the fan, okay? But uh, it goes on to say that in a statement to the New York Post that an officer with the Department of Homeland Security says that we believe that there are that there is a disturbing history of sex trafficking or SEX trafficking, rather, says that we are responding to concrete, detailed, explicit allegations. It goes on to say that this is not random and we did not choose a name out of the hat, says that we had allegations that we're following up on. OK, it says that the feds collected phones, cameras, surveillance footage and even open safes, you guys, and raided two properties obtaining evidence on diddy it says that the civil suit against diddy that cassie was also involved in is what launched the investigation so when cassie did her actual uh case against diddy to where they settled out that gave them the uh heads up on what was going on in terms of trafficking there is no expiration date on trafficking cases can't say that that happened 10 years ago feds don't give a damn they're gonna follow up on it there's no expiration date on that. So when Cassie came out with her deposition and talked about trafficking, FOs, the feds were already putting their investigation together. When Little Rod, L. Rod came out and put his out and started naming names, and those were very similar things in his deposition in terms of Cassie's, the feds were like, okay, we're on to something. Let's go ahead now. They had already started getting warrants and stuff together. This was not something they just put together to kick Diddy's door in and go raid his homes. They had already been working on this since Cassie's case. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the officer goes on to say, he says that they are getting a lot of cooper cooperation from alleged victims and that Diddy has not been charged of anything while the investigation is underway. That says that, however, Diddy is free to do what he wants to do right now. But he is aware that if changes are, or rather if charges do come down, that they will get him. This is what a Homeland Security officer has said, all right? So all of Diddy's prospects and everybody else that he's been around, they asses is getting ready, they, they talking. The higher ups that used to protect Diddy, they have cut ties with him because they're not about to go down with him. Everybody knows that Diddy's going down. It's just a matter of time. All the stuff they confiscated from his house, they're going through that stuff now. They're weeding through everything that they have against him now. So everybody that's underage and videos and everything that's been going on with the drug, they already got the guy, Brendan, his drug lord. They already got him. He has a $1,500 uh, bond that's been set for him. Of course, he's going to get out, but they're watching him. Everything that Diddy's doing, they're watching him. So he can't leave the U.S. as of now. He can go where he wants to, but he can't leave the U.S. because he doesn't have a passport. That was confiscated when they got him at the Miami uh, airport, okay? So yes, uh, Diddy, that's your ass, baby. That's your ass. Uh, Brendan Paul is his name. Uh, they found the uh, pink cochiana in his bag uh, and they found marijuana also in his bag when they confiscated that at the airport. So Diddy, it's a wrap for you, sir. It's a wrap, Do -do 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 -do, baby. You gone, sir. I hate to see a black man go down, but bottom line is you've been doing this shit for years. A lot of women been violated. A lot of women been abused and a lot of, a lot of boys as well, women and men.
been violated and went through a lot of stuff. Uh, shout out to Kim Porter, baby. Uh, you're getting justice from the grave. Shout out to Biggie Smalls, justice from the grave. The same day that the uh, feds raided Biggie's house, I mean, uh, Biggie's house. The same day that the feds raided uh, Diddy's house is the very same day that Biggie Smalls' Ready to Die album was released. Uh, March 25th, I talked about it before. March 25th, Ready to Die album from Biggie Smalls came out. Uh, March 25th, uh, matter of fact, what is it, 07? Was it 07? 95 or something like that. I got to go back and look at my dates. I think it was 07. Was it 07? I got to go back and look at it. Uh, but anyway, I do know that it was March 25th. March 25th was when the Ready to Die album came out uh, from Biggie Smalls. And the March 25th is when the feds raided Diddy's house. So they're, they're speaking from the grave and they're going to get justice, okay? They are going to get justice. Shout out to Kim Porter. Uh, baby, you're going to get the justice that you deserve from this situation. It's unfortunate that your life was taken the way that it was. We know that it was not uh, low bar or low bar pneumonia. We know it wasn't that. So it's all going to come out. Everything is coming out in the wash, okay? They said if it don't come out in the rinse, it's damn sure going to come out in the wash. But we're going to see what it gives. As I get new developments, you guys will get them as well. Thank you so much, Mods, for uh, modding. Thank you so much, content creators, for being here. I think they said Chit Chat with QT was here. Thank you so much, Tea Talk with your girl. Any other content creators that joined us this morning, thank you for being here, okay? Uh, thank you to my Caramelians for taking time out of your morning to also join the live. Uh, please hit that like button. For those of you joining for the very first time, please subscribe. And also uh, hit that notification bell so you will be notified when we have new videos to come which is every day all right love you guys down enjoy your thursday i will see you guys later for our pop in and goodbye